does Pixar look for when choosing an idea for a film? So choosing an idea. Well, it seems to me if you look at her films, there's two main things. The first is a world, a very, very rich world, a world that offers you a lot of characters and a lot of danger. When you think of superheroes, toys, the ocean, uh, the world of the dead, the inside of your brain, these are worlds that are immediately very rich. Like you can immediately imagine, you almost real. When you think of the log line of Inside Out, there could be 50 different elements they could use in the brain or in the soul oh, yeah. or, or my person that they didn't even put in. Just the scrap list of that movie must be, you know, exciting and enticing. So one part of it is really a world that is rich and you can explore and has some danger or conflict built in. But then the other side is to really find um, emotional states. Uh, my, my favorite example is, is Toy Story because you start with, oh, the world of toys, a child's toys. And that's so exciting. It's such a rich idea. And, you know, kids would relate to it. But when you think about it, the movie, the real logline, or what really makes us love that movie is what happens when a child's favorite toy is thrown aside for a newer toy. And that is, it's you know. Brutal. It's brutal. Brutal. Yeah, uh, it's heartbreak. I mean, that song it's in Toy Story. Level, it's like Sundance drama. It could be an indie drama, you know. It's like it's like a brother, the unfavored brother, right? No, that Sundance. I mean, that Sundance. The uh, Toy Story Two song uh, about oh. being left on the side of the road and stuff. I'm like, oh, like you just are devastated listening to that. Well, I mean, listen, the first, what is it? The first four minutes or five minutes of Up. It's probably the best representation of a human relationship I've ever oh, seen wow. on film. The history of like a, a I mean, it's amazing. And how yeah. and how do you go I, in and, and how do you go in with Up and pitch Up? Like we're gonna do a movie about an old dude and a Boy Scout in a house with balloons in it, and it's just like the marketing department must have had a field day. Like we, you you want us to sell like little dolls of an old angry guy. <laughs> Which they did, by the way, but... <laughs> Which they did, they did. I mean, Up, I know it started as something very, very, very different. I don't remember the, the details, but it started as something very, very different. And I wonder, like, and they sort of talk about this a little in the book, like, because that image of the house with the balloons, it's, it's such a great image. It's so amazing. And I bet they, I, I bet, I could be wrong, that they had that first. And they're like, okay, so how do we justify that? And all of that beautiful opening in, is, is sort of almost the only explanation I can imagine for someone tying a balloon and being so connected to their house. You know, right. Right, th that ridiculous thing of, of flying away with your house becomes so natural when you see that opening and what that house means and everything that comes from that. Yeah, I mean, they they have done what Hitchcock said he wish he could do, which is like literally play a, a, a piano key and hit an emotion. If you want him to cry, you hit this button. If you want him to laugh, you hit this button. Pixar yeah. films do that in a way like, I mean, personally, one of my favorite Pixars is Coco. Like, I absolutely okay. love Coco and how they did it and the music and the visuals. It was just all so beautiful. And you're just like, you know, I, I see myself as a grown man, like, tearing up constantly over these movies wally i mean jesus the guy doesn't even talk and you <laughs> completely are invested in what happens to this little trash can yeah. it's it's like so they're so brilliant in the way they do it is remarkable my favorite is toy story 3 the ending of toy story 3 oh. i i just collapse no absolutely i mean it's it's I mean, and, and and to be fair, like you know, we always talk about Pixar's hits, and they're they definitely outweigh the ones that didn't do as well. And and my like one of the ones that I saw besides Cars too, which which we're not to talk, discuss, um, but uh, um, but uh, the Good Dinosaur, yeah. I thought Good Dinosaur failed uh, not only yeah. in the box office, but it failed every major Pixar thing like when i saw good story a good dinosaur i was like 
this, this isn't a Pixar film. This feels like something else. I don't understand. What what yeah. what went wrong on that in that movie, in your opinion? I mean, first off, I want to say that I do cry twice in The Good Dinosaur. Like, there's so moments. Bad. There's mo- there's, there's glimpses. Moments. There's glimpses of Pixar, but it's definitely not it's a definitely. full package. So the Pixar formula, like the structure they have, is really balancing three different stories in each movie. One is action adventure. It's Indiana Jones. It's it's part of the Caribbean. It's this life or death. You know, it's joy riding like a tower of boyfriends to get to the train. It's all that crazy stuff. Then they have a bonding story, which is, you know, it's Woody and Buzz. It's Carl and the boy and, and, and Russell, the Boy Scout, right? It's two people who, who have deep emotional reasons why they can't coexist. Woody and Buzz can't coexist. One uh, doesn't understand that, he, uh, that he's a toy and, the, and Woody when he sees Buzz, he sees his irrelevancy, right? They can't be together until they grow. And then the third thing is this sort of emotional change, this sort of education or redemption plot that a character goes inside himself. And I think the good dinosaur um, minimized a lot of the action adventure. Like there's some of that there. Um, I remember the flood. I remember there's these paradoxals that are evil. But it doesn't have that same level of tension and action that some of the other movies have. And I think it makes it feel a little slighter. And and the same thing with the bonding plot. There's these great moments with the human child. Those are my favorite moments. But it doesn't, I don't think it has the same sort of complexity and richness that some of their other movies uh, create between their conflicting characters. And then when you get to the third marker of growth, I remember Arlo is the name of the dinosaur, I think. Yeah. And he had that thing about making your mark or overcoming his fear. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's sort of what the whole thing is hanged on. But I think, again, it's not something as almost as mature, I want to say, or as complicated as uh, some of the other examples. Like Woody learning to give up his spot or Joy learning to accept sadness into her life and into Riley's life. Like those... Those things are adult emotions. Those things are sort of things adults deal with. Mike in Monsters University failing, giving up on his life dream, you know? So I think, and, and Arlo's arc is a little more, um, I'd say, oriented towards children. Like as a, as a teenager, as an adult, his arc doesn't resonate uh, with the same strength. Yeah, as as we as we're talking, I'm going back and through my head. I'm like, okay, Pixar films, and I'm going going. I'm just clicking them off, and the majority of them do have those characters that can't get along, um, or they can't live with each other, or like even Wally has uh, Eve, who they are opposites. They're generally opposites, either opposites and they yeah. can't get along, and generally opposites don't get along <laughs> at the beginning, and they figure a way out to come towards the end. Uh, Incredibles, I'm not sure about. I know Cars had. Incredibles, less so. Less so has yeah, that. Yeah, but that's also, that was the first kind of outside the box, outside of the brain trust, because they brought Brad Bird in from the outside to do mm-hmm. that. So that's why it makes sense that that film was kind of on its, has its own thing. But even Cars also, with Mater and. So credit on his films. I'm and sorry? When Pixar films have like seven credited writers between story and screenplay, Brad Bird is the only one. Where he 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 has the sole credit, right? Exactly. So his his stuff is a little bit um, different than the, the other Pixar films, but everything else, like generally speaking, like in Coco, you know, the his um his his uncle, well, his dad, eventually. But oops, oh, a spoiler alert. Um, but uh, <laughs> but those kind of um, but those characters, and you're right, and there is generally always massive action adventure, even in Toy Story. I mean, the the the, the yeah. There's constant adventures and like, but the adventure's going downstairs <laughs> or out a window. Um, but it's still the stakes are extremely high. Uh, Wally had a lot of, of that as well. I mean, it, it's you start analyzing it because I know a lot of people listening right now have, have. I mean, most people listening should have at least seen one, if not all, Pixar films. They're just those kind of films. But it, it is when you start to, to deconstruct them this way it starts taking on a little bit different light 